Hello everybody, my name is Rachel. Welcome to my channel, Colinati. Today I'm going to do a pretty massive unhaul, at least by my standards. I haven't done a cleanup and reorganization of my personal collection for eight months, and when I sat down to do that, I realized I've got an entire shelf full of books that I just didn't want to keep anymore. And this is a bit of an unusual unhaul for me. These are all books that I enjoyed. I liked all of these books, but I didn't feel like I was going to reread them, or if I wanted to, they're so popular I can easily get them from the library or even buy another copy in the future. There's just no reason for them to hang around on my shelves when I'm probably not going to read them again. So let's get into it. First up is my extra copy of Stories of Your Life and Others by Ted Chang. I have a signed and personalized edition that is going to replace this in my collection, so I do not need a third copy. I already have two. <laughs> Um, you may not know, but Ted Chang is one of my favorite authors of all time, and this particular short story collection is one of my favorite collections I've ever read. It's a pretty pivotal book in my reading history, I have to say. Next up is The Invisible Valley by Su Wei. This is translated from Chinese by Austin Warner. I think I did an entire review of this book when I read it. It, it was really interesting. It's basically a literary historical fiction novel that might have a bit of a fantastical element. Might. Um, it was a really challenging read for me, but I thought ultimately it was really, really good. I would read more by this author if any of his other works are ever translated into English. But it is not really my type of book. I'm never going to reread it, so I am letting my copy go to somebody who may also really enjoy it. Miranda in Milan by Catherine Duckett. This might be a bit of a surprise because I enjoyed this novella. I really like Duckett's writing style. This is an arc that I specifically requested from Tor.com when it came out, and it, it was really good, but I've found myself not thinking about it very much. It is kind of a queering of Shakespeare that centers the women in The Tempest, um, but it's not calling to me to revisit anytime soon. Next is Austral by Paul McCauley. I feel a little bit bad at getting rid of this because it was a gift from my friend Andrea. Her channel is Infinite Text. Um, I kept saying that I couldn't read this because I could never find a copy of it in the States, and she had a copy and she sent it to me. So thank you, Andrea, for giving me a copy so I could read it. Um, I thought it was all right. Um, I've enjoyed other things by Paul McCauley more, um, and I didn't feel like I really needed to keep this on my shelves if I was not going to revisit it or necessarily necessarily recommend it and stuff. Um, Autonomous by Annalee Newitz. This is another book that I got from the publisher. I did a review of it at the time. I enjoyed it. I liked it. Um, but it's very popular. A lot of people know about it. And once again, I don't think I will reread it. And if I want to, my library has multiple copies of it so I can get this off of my shelves. Next up is Broken Places and Outer Spaces, Finding Creativity in the Unexpected by Nettie Okorafor. This is her TED Talk speech slash short memoir, and it is about her early life and a surgery she had for scoliosis that affected her a lot, and kind of the, the experience of that and recovering sparked her journey to be a novelist, basically. It was an interesting read. I really enjoyed learning more about Okorafor as a person, but I, I will never reread this. Now I know I'm never going to come back to it. Then the author who shall not be named, uh, Quidditch Through the Ages and Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them. I'm getting rid of these very old childhood copies because I don't care about them at all. I think I've read them once. <laughs> I've been carrying these two tiny little books around for I don't know, 15 years now, and I have never read them since I was like 12, so whatever. I don't need to keep them. I'm actually a bit on the fence at keeping all of my Harry Potter copies because I really only like the first four books in that series now. I've never been able to reread them past the fourth book, and I'm just really not keen on anything JK Rowling right now. Like, I just don't care anymore. I'm so over it. On the other hand, even I can say that Harry Potter was influential in my life, so... Mm. 
Next up is Head On by John Scalzi, another book that I got from the publisher, and I enjoyed this. It's not my favorite stuff by Scalzi, but it was good fun. But this is another one that if I ever want to reread it, he's so popular I can get his books from the library no problem, so don't need to keep this one on my shelves either. The Adventure of the Incognita Countess by Cynthia Ward. I bought this on a whim when I was at Worldcon in San Jose because it's one of the conversation pieces from Aqueduct Press, and I am very curious about a lot of their novellas. Um, this is kind of a mashup pastiche of a lot of classic gothic vampire stories like Carmilla and Dracula. It was kind of fun, but at the same time, I realized I do not care about a lot of classic vampire fiction. Not my thing. So I decided I'm never going to reread it. I'm not going to read the sequel novella either. I will give this one away. And I think I know somebody who might like it a lot more than I did. This next one is a bit of a surprise even to me. It is The Stars Are Legion by Cameron Hurley. This was one of my really, really anticipated books by Hurley back when it came out. Um, I have read and really enjoyed novels by her in the past, but beginning with this book, I started to feel like her stories were becoming more violent and brutal and gross than I really cared to read. This book has some pretty gross out stuff in it. It has body horror and I thought it was good. It had some really interesting ideas in it, but I do not want to reread it. Like I do not want to be back in this world. Um, so I, I don't need to keep a copy of it, but uh, by no means is it a bad book. It's just not for me. Last First Snow by Max Gladstone. This is the fourth book in the craft sequence. I'm keeping the first three because I enjoy them a lot and I think I will revisit them in the future, but Last First Snow is the one in the series I've read that I just didn't like that much. Um, I found it to be a little bit boring and I didn't, I didn't love the characters that are the protagonists in this one. I've just never really liked them. So uh, this one I'm never going to revisit. I can get rid of it. Next, The Ocean at the End of the Lane by Neil Gaiman. I bought this and read it when it came out and at that time I was reading everything by Neil Gaiman. He's not actually one of my favorite authors. I, I like his stuff, some of it more than others, but I can't say I I'm a Gaiman fan. I liked this. I liked it enough to buy my own copy of it. <laughs> actually, I think I read it from the library, so I don't think I, this copy has ever actually been read before, interestingly. Um, but he is insanely popular, and if I ever want to reread this story, I can very easily find his books. <laughs> Next up, some translated books that I don't think I'll ever reread. The Q by Basma Abdel Aziz. This was really good. I highly recommend it. Um, it's kind of inspired by the Arab Spring. The author is Egyptian and this is set in Cairo. And I'm not sure if it's kind of magical realism. It's a bit odd, but it was really interesting. Um, I just realized that as much as I think it's good and I recommend it to other people, I probably won't revisit it myself, so passing this along to somebody else who might really enjoy it. And The Days of the Deer by Liliana Bodoc. Bodoc is an Argentinian author, I believe, and this is translated from Spanish. I bought it because I was trying to find a lot of translated SFF this particular year. It's also blurred by Ursula Le Guin. And it was all right. It felt like very, very Tolkien-esque fantasy. And I realized it's the first in a series and the rest of the series may never be translated. And yeah, so if the other books in the series ever materialize in English, I will read them, but I don't need to keep this one on my shelves. I'm getting rid of three of the four books in the Have Mercy series by Jada Jones and Danielle Bennett. I've read all four books, but I only ever owned these three, which are Have Mercy, Shadow Magic, and Dragon Soul. I got into the series originally like circa 2013 or 2014 because mechanical dragons, also queer characters, and it was good. Um, the authors are really good writers, very good at multiple POV stories as well. That always really impressed me about this. Um, I have periodically thought about rereading Have Mercy in particular, but not so much that I need to keep these books anymore. Um, I can actually get all of the series from the library now. I bought these copies after I had already read them from the library, so I can say goodbye to them now and would definitely recommend the books if you are interested in the mechanical dragons, which 
mostly show up in the first book. I'm getting rid of all three volumes of Johnny Wonder. This is um, a comic series by Anand Panagaria and Yuko Ota. I read this religiously when it was a webcomic. I think it kind of stopped being updated. Um, there were never any more print volumes of it. I loved this back in the day, and when I was thinking about getting rid of it, I decided to reread the first volume and I bailed. It just wasn't interesting anymore. It wasn't funny anymore. But in the like late aughts, I read this all the time and really enjoyed it, but not so much anymore. Next is Mendoza and Hollywood by Cage Baker. This is my favorite of her company series, which is kind of a time travel science fiction series, but the premise is you can only travel into the past, not into the future. So the company that wants to exploit and benefit from the riches of the past sends agents to the past they take human children from those time periods and turn them into immortal cyborgs, and then those cyborgs just live through history doing the company's bidding until they live up until the present day. And Mendoza is the main character of a lot of the books and one of those children who was turned into a cyborg. The first book in the series is In the Garden of Eden, which is spelled I-D-E-N. I really recommend this series. I enjoyed the books so much, and it was some of the earlier adult science fiction that I read that wasn't recommended to me by my parents. <laughs> I just found Cage Baker at the library one day. Um, however, I don't I don't know if I'll ever reread them. I just have not felt the urge to pick up the books again, so I'm gonna say goodbye to this this one lonely volume that I've been keeping for the last seven years or so. And then the last three books that I'm getting rid of are the first three omnibuses of the Vlad Talto series by Stephen Bruce. This is the first three, five, seven seven novels, <laughs> and I really enjoy this fantasy series. Um, I'm actually keeping the latest book, Valista, because I think I might reread that one before the next book in the series comes out, but I highly doubt I will ever reread the earlier novels, and it's actually really easy to find these particular omnibuses if I should ever want them again. So I'm going to get rid of these and clear up some space on my bookshelves. And that is pretty much it, guys. I have two gigantic stacks of books that I'm getting rid of and more space on my bookshelves that I will rapidly fill up with other things. <laughs> I say that, but I've actually been really good about um, acquiring fewer books both this year and last year, so my rate of acquisition has slowed down and I'm not feeling so much pressure for getting more bookshelves and stuff like that. So it's also a really good feeling to get rid of books, even if you enjoyed them, just being able to finally admit that you can let go of them and that's not a bad thing, you can always get them again. I think we should practice that more. <laughs> I am all for collecting all the pretty books and having that nice collection, but um, keeping books just for the sake of having a large library is no longer my goal. It was my goal when I was a teenager, but not anymore. <laughs> So I hope you enjoyed this unhaul. I have pretty much nothing else to say about this right now. So thank you for watching and I'll be back to talk to you again soon. And until then, bye.